Hello and welcome to a new video about the physical principles of electricity. Well, today it's not really about the physical principles of electricity, today it's about the physical principle of heating something. Yeah. Because last time we had, okay, if something is traveling through a conductive material, current, there is uh, energy needed yeah? and this energy will heat up this thing. So we can heat up things with electricity. And I'm not sure if some of you have at home those such sophisticated device like this. Yeah? A water boiler. This is my model. Uh, it is Corona. Maybe I've imported this to Austria. <laughs> now we can joke about it. Corona. Uh, this is my, this is my water boiler. I wonder if they renamed their company after the last years. I guess so. I would do that. Uh, we have here uh, temperature. I'm not sure how accurate this is. Right now it shows around 20 degrees. And we have here also a volume indication. Also don't know how accurate this is, but it will be okay for us, I guess. Uh, we have one liter of water inside there. Uh, so we have one liter of water, and actually what we try to figure out is how long it would take for this water boiler to boil up this one liter of water to 100 degrees Celsius. I want to cook tea, right? Tea, tea time. Electric heating, this is what we should. So, of course, if I want to heat something up, there's a difference which material. Uh, it depends, do we want to heat up water? Do I want to heat up? I don't know, uh, copper wire, how, how, how much heat will be there be, yeah, or aluminium or steel, because it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's a gearbox, for instance. There I need, uh, a value somehow. And this value, this is called specific heat capacity. Okay. So there is, for each material, there's a specific heat. Capacity. Formula sign is C and the unit is Joule by Gram and Kelvin. So if I want to heat up a certain material by one Kelvin, one gram of a certain material, I need that amount of Joule. So let's have a look what are, what are typical values. Aluminium. We have 0 0.92 Joule by Gram and Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Copper. We have 0 0.39 Joule by Gram and Kelvin. Steel. 0 0.42 Joule by Gram and Kelvin. You see, they are all, the aluminium is a little bit more. So if I want to heat up one gram, of aluminium by 1 Kelvin, I need 0 0.92 Joule. If I want to heat it up by 100 Kelvin, I would use 92 Joule. Huh? And if I'm, if I'm using 1 gram steel, heat up 100 Kelvins, I, would, I would use 42 Joule. Huh? This is what this says. Huh? And we are not having steel, we are not, okay, we have copper, we have probably aluminium inside and we have steel inside. For sure, we had to have to heat them up, but the main content is for sure water. Huh? And now let's have a look at what water is. Water is 4.19 Joule by gram and Kelvin, which equals 4.19 kilojoule by kilogram and Kelvin. So significantly more. Huh? Water, water, to heat up water, you need a lot of energy. And this actually, 4.2 kilojoule. Pro probably you have already seen on the back uh, of, uh, I don't know, uh, some sweets or uh, that. how much kilocalories this, this table of chocolate is. And a calorie was defined to heat up one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And here, we need exactly this, yeah? 
and one one calorie is 4.2 joules. You can compare this. Huh? On the back, you always have the joules and and it's, it's given in kilojoules and kilocalories. Huh? And there's always the the uh, 4.2 factor in between. That's the reason huh? because calorie was defined by water, and this is the specific heat capacity of water in as SI units. We're calculating in SI units. This should not be forgot. Yeah? So we are using the metric system and this is the metric system for the two joule by gram and Kelvin, kilojoule by kilogram and Kelvin. That's water. Now, uh, let's, let's calculate yeah? how, much, how much water we have. Yeah? How much water, what is the mass of the water? We have one liter of water multiplied by one kilogram per liter. This is the density of the, of course, the density is changing, but let's, I don't even know how accurate those measurement, measurement devices are. Yeah? So we have one kilogram of water. That's the mass where I want to heat up. Mm -hmm. And then we have the temperature. Difference delta theta theta is a Greek letter theta uh, is a T uh, in, in Greek so temperature T is good uh, delta theta equals I want to reach one hundred degrees Celsius uh, currently I have twenty degrees Celsius so we're having 80 degrees Celsius delta theta. Yeah? And this, because it's a difference, a temperature difference, is also 80 kelvins. Because it's a difference. Huh? I don't have to take into account absolute zero because both temperatures have absolute zero. 80 degrees Celsius difference is 80 kelvin difference. And what is their energy I'm using? Yeah? So the energy I'm using to heat this up equals the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by this temperature change. And in our case, this would mean, let's see, we have one kilogram. Multiplied by 4.19 kilojoule by kilogram and Kelvin. Multiplied by 80 Kelvin. Let's see the units. If the kilogram, kilogram, Kelvin, Kelvin. The rest is kilojoule. So what we're expecting now is kilojoule. And where is the calculator? Here is the calculator. I have to type this in now. Let's see. It's 80 times 4.19. And this is 335.2. So we're having 335.2 kilojoule. Hmm. These are 335.2, 10 by the power of 3 joule. This is the amount of energy I need I put into the water to rise, to rise to 100 degrees Celsius. And now we said this must be delivered by electricity. And the work from electricity was voltage multiplied by current multiplied by time. So we want to know the time, how much it takes to reach this amount of energy. Yeah? We have to write it like that. That's the work, the needed work. This is the energy I need for the water. Divided by voltage and current.
I need those values. Huh? So the work, this is the work actually we need to put in. This I know. This is 300 Joule. Hmm? And now we need to know the voltage and the, and the current. Then I have a look at the, at the type. Uh -huh. And there is written 220 volts, right? And 2000 watts. What we are talking about? I will calculate. So we have 220 volts. It's alternating current, but this is not that important right now because it's the effective value. We will talk about this later. So 220 volts. And now that the, the, the current, I'm going to calculate this now for us. We had 2000 watt divided by 220 is, uh, nine. Nine ampere. Huh? Roughly. So these are the values. Yeah? So let's see how long it should take us. Huh? Calculator. Where 300.2, 10 by the power of 3, divided by 220, multiplied by 9, is 100. Sixty-nine dot three seconds. This is the amount of time we would expect that we need to heat up our water. <laughs> At least according to the math. And now we do the experiment and see how long it really takes. So. We will stop this and boil it up. Good. Try this, put this here. So it should not even take three minutes. Right? It's roughly uh, one minute, one minute and uh, Fifty seconds. One minute and fifty seconds should be all right. I will do this with my with my phone. The stopping. Yeah. Here, put it on the table. It should turn turn off automatically, and I will start now. Starting to sizzle. Mm -hmm. Around 30 degrees now. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. So now we have halfway there, halfway there. Eighty. At two fifty-three. If two fifty was the calculated value. Which would be about now, but we're still boiling. We're almost there. Three minutes and that. Ooh, steamy. Steamy window. <laughs> uh, I'll make a nice cup of tea afterwards. Three minutes and nine seconds. So this we will also note measured. Three 
3 minutes, 9 seconds. So we have 180, 189 seconds. There's a difference of 20 seconds, right? Uh, why is this difference? Well, there can be several reasons. Uh, these measurement devices are not accurate. It needs a little time to recognize the automatic. It is already boiling. It needs to heat up a little bit above 100 degree to turn off uh, this, this bimetal. This is also something. And of course, of course, we are not only heating up the water, we are also heating up the whole device. So we also need energy to heat up those coppers, those aluminum, those steel, those, 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 those plastics and stuff which is inside. Uh, but we are close. We are close. We are, we are close. This is how you calculate how you can heat something up with electricity to guess how much energy is needed there. Probably need this somewhere. And I've said we are going to learn this. I've read something about watts. Watt is a power. This is the next topic we are talking about. Uh, well, how is power power and at work, how do they interact and what does it mean for electricity? Okay. Electric power. Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.